Hey everybody, so welcome to this year's Knowledge Graph Technology Showcase, where I go through and give my honest opinions about new cool tools that I have seen out there and give you my honest opinion about what I think about them. These are not sponsored or promotionals or any other thing out there. This is just me honestly reaching out and figuring out what this tool is all about and sharing my insights in case that would be interesting to you. And if you haven't seen one of these before, I'm reaching almost 50 different honest reviews at this point. So if you don't see the tool in the lineup this year, make sure you check out the playlist down below and up above to see if I have reviewed the tool that you are looking for. And today we are going to be reviewing, yeah, that one. And as with all of these videos, my honest opinion is summarized at the very end of this video. All right, so with all of that said, Let's go get started. Actually, so I'm Paul Appleby, um, one of the co-founders of uh, Graphify. Um, as you said, we've been going a few years now. April 2019, we actually we got going. And uh, I think last time we spoke, it was December 20. So we'd mm -hmm. literally only launched the software. It would be literally weeks, if not if, if that. So so we were infancy. We were barely even infants. Um, but uh, yeah, here we are three years later and um, things are going well. I'm the co-founder of Graphify. My name is Ravinder Singh. Yeah, very excited to talk about what we have done in the last three years since we spoke to you. Uh, I think Paul spoke to you. Really excited. We have done a lot of cool new stuff, great features based on the customer feedback. Excited to talk about it all. So we're looking at um, Graphology 1.18. Um, I'm running this um, locally, but this is essentially the same as the, the SAS version. So 1.18 was, was literally uh, launched on Saturday. So it's the brand new latest version. Um, I say we're looking at the, the SaaS version. There's also a managed service version and an on-premise version um, available as well. But most of our customers use use the SaaS version. So I'll go into into here. Um, so underneath Graphology, um, really, one of the key things about Graphology is um, it, it's ease of use and getting going and starting yeah. where you need to um, and and going from there. So when you go in, um, basically, what you you can start very small for a, a cheap subscription, and, and then you can grow a, as you need. Um, so, mm -hmm. the examples we're looking at here are small, but the taxonomies can grow to you know huge taxonomies, huge ontologies, and the subscriptions can support kind of increasing. What does levels. huge mean? Because I do know quite a few people that watch this channel that have very large taxonomies and ontologies. So, what's what is uh, the the size? the the tool can handle before it starts to break so it depends on the subscription level as you might expect because mm -hmm. there are different levels of infrastructure supporting the different subscription levels but um at the at the top end and we can go customize subscriptions as well so we're talking in excess of uh, a million concepts um okay. or, or a million classes uh, and the latest release um this weekend was really about supporting ontologies especially big life sites ontologies where there are hundreds, literally hundreds of thousands of classes in the ontologies. And I, I can I can show you an example of that in a bit. I've got some loaded. Um, so we're talking in, in excess of a, a million concepts or classes or, or whatever you, you know, you're thinking about. Yeah. Um, Thank you for that. You, know, you come in and, and we'll, we'll just show that this as a, as a very simple, this is just a flat list example, but mm -hmm. I think th this highlights some of the, the really important stuff. And what we're finding is that um, although some of our customers are still using taxonomies for, let's say, traditional use cases, you yeah. know, such as classification. The vast majority, it's more like data management and metadata yeah. management. They're creating yeah. essentially knowledge graphs, and those yeah. knowledge graphs can be driving, you know, AI research. And and a lot of the people coming to us recently are AI startups. You know, not wanting to get into the AI um, uh, and knowledge graph debate, but you know, we're certainly seeing a lot of evidence that. Yeah. You know, taxonomy and ontology management is really important to a lot of these AI startups. Um, so they're really about connecting uh, or creating these connected graphs, you know, using taxonomies, using ontology. So here's a very trivial example. I so said this is one of our example projects. And yes, this is a SCOS concept. But really, you know, the, the, the really interesting stuff is when we connect here with ontologies as well. So you can see here we, we're using an airport class. So this isn't just... A concept it's an it's an you know information about an airport and and when we scroll down we start to see additional relationships 
um, and, and information about this data. So yes, it's about taxonomies, but the vast majority of, of our customers are going beyond just taxonomies. Yeah. Again, under the under the covers, we, here we're using Shackle. And if I just switch over to this screen, this is really one of the most important screens in the application because this is how taxonomies and ontologies come together. Mm -hmm. So what we just saw there is, is this, what we call a template. Now, this is a Shackle shape for those who, who, who know what Shackle is. And obviously Shackle is a constraint language. And there's a really important interplay between ontologies and, and shackle they do different things at the technical level but on the surface most of our users actually uh come from it from a shackle mentality if this or how shackle works thinking about constraints not about things like inference so yeah we handle all of that behind the scenes and hopefully it, it works how users expect this stuff to work and, and we, so we take away a lot of that interplay so really what most users are creating are these what we call these templates but they're shackle shapes and just selecting the properties putting in a few constraints like minimum counts, maximum counts, yep. you know, lengths and so on. Um, and if they want to, they can connect these relationships to other taxonomies. So here you could say, okay, I want all my located in uh, values to come from the country's taxonomy. Again, if we just go back to Heathrow, uh, there are all sorts of um, rules and checks going on behind the scenes. You can't have the same preferred label in different languages. You can't have an alternative label the same as their preferred label. And all of that stuff, all of it, the, the checks are happening behind the scenes, and so the user doesn't have to worry about that. It's just the application is stopping people making mistakes. And, and there's, there's, there's two levels to this. Or there's multiple levels. So there's what we've just been talking about, the application, mm -hmm. and really what the standards define. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a second level. We have these kind of built-in quality checks as well. So mm -hmm. these are standard, and they will run, and some of them are integrity checks. Some go above what the standards define. So that's really another level of checking. But what's one of our most popular features is, is this little thing over here. So it's reporting. Um, mm -hmm. So like you say, we can only go so far uh, in terms of scores. Uh, the templates get you a lot further as well, and then the quality checks. But then there's really an, uh, another level of, let's call it rules or, or reporting. And so custom reports are essentially um, Sparkle-based reports. So we have some predefined reports, um, and it, here's one that you know we will show preferred label lengths now believe it or not some organizations have um, a constraint on they shouldn't have labels longer than a certain length because when it comes to display them it causes problems yeah. so yeah. base basic rules like that so essentially reports allow you to create any query you like and, and generate it as a report now i, I created one very simple one um, earlier just to show you so I'll, I'll show you how that's done but essentially when you run it you do this and yes this is the most basic report output you can have but essentially behind this is a, the important thing is it's a sparkle query so as long as our customers um, are happy writing a bit of sparkle and we're always happy to help them anyway um, they can essentially write any report they like uh, for whatever purposes and then obviously they can do they can click through and you know it could be a, a validation report so they can go and correct data or change data it might be a manager of management report it might be statistics if i just switch over to the to the sparkle dashboard so in here so we've got a, a fairly advanced kind of sparkle dashboard so if i select that query so here's that saved query um mm -hmm. and you can see here i've got it ticked as users a report so yes you do need to know a little bit of sparkle um but um you know we do give them examples on the on the predefined queries and we're always you know there to help through services and stuff if they're not and and the vast majority are quite happy. We, we've got some customers have got 40, 50 plus reports, you know, doing all sorts of different things with them. Um, so it, it, say it's a really popular feature um, because they, you know, they've got the flexibility to do what they like and they're staying within the application um, and within the UI. So that's important yeah. for them as well. They don't have to go off to IT and say, can you set up this report for me? And it comes yeah. back weeks later. You know, they can do it yeah. in, in literally minutes. And, and that's, yeah. that's, an, that's an important. Mm -hmm. And so I think um, just to highlight, I think some of the other big features that we've added over the past three years. Um, so we've, we've now got a very sophisticated advanced search. Um, you know, right. And you can, do all, you can do all sorts of things here. Um, because again, you know, coming back to like the, the governance and reporting thing, search obviously serves multiple purposes and one of them can be that so you know you can do all sorts of things here in filters like um find me things that have properties that have a value or don't have a value and, and stuff like that. so if you're looking for things like missing data you know adv the advanced search is really powerful complementary to that is also that this is actually the bulk edit screen so you can go in and you can make 
bog changes so i could go in there and i could oh, say right good. i'm glad I'm that you have this it's so yeah. annoying sometimes when there's there's no bulk update you can do quite you know complex things like um, add classes add properties remove properties update properties um so you know there's there's pretty sophisticated bulk edit features so this is the generic kind of bulk edit capability we have some other built-in um bulk operations for common use cases like mm -hmm. add, add a class to everything in the taxonomy that kind of thing so for common operations there's literally push a button but here you've got a lot of control over um, bulk operations um, in here as well so yes you can hide i mean a lot of these skills properties people don't use them so if i actually go into here um you can hide away all sorts of different properties um and and this is really the you know the control center for your your taxonomy uh, the ontology has something similar mm -hmm. you, know, you can do things like you've got lots of options for managing your iris or uris mm -hmm. you know, um things like default classes um, the templates that you should use, connecting to DBpedia, linking to other projects. There's all sorts of settings here, um, like mono hierarchy mode versus poly hierarchy mode, and that's really important um, for some users, you know, who only want a, a mono hierarchical structure. So again, the system handles all of that. And then there's all these other various things that you can do here. You've got history, you've got your statistics. One of the things is something called suggestions. So this hmm. is kind of one of our, our workflow capabilities. So generally what happens is we have, um, our customers have maybe a small team of, of taxonomists on the taxonomy side, and there could be a whole bunch of SMEs, and they maybe want to come in and make you know um, suggestions. So they can come in, um, and obviously it's all the permissions um, can all be set up accordingly. And you can do things like, okay, I'm going to suggest a new airport. Now I'm going to say Norwich because this is where I live. Um, add this you know, kind of thing, and then that's there. So then you've got this uh, suggestion in the system. You can oh, have a thread cool. of discussion. Uh, and one of the unique features to us is that um, graphology works uh, in real time. So mm -hmm. uh, in the same way with Google Docs, if people are editing the same document, you see mm -hmm. everybody editing it. That's how graphology yes. works. We have real time collaborations. If you were sat there adding comments, they would just be appearing on my screen. Or if you were mm -hmm. adding content, they would just appear. And graphology handles all of the, the complexity and the conflict resolution. Um, for nice. you we have a, a sort of suggestions dashboard so you can come up here uh, and this is mm -hmm. kind of one aspect to come in and you know see what's kind of assigned to you that kind of thing mm -hmm. if you mm -hmm. want to do that way well, okay. you maybe didn't see it when i created that suggestion you can assign it to somebody and they will be oh, emailed cool. okay so okay on. so so yeah sorry that, that was a bit quick and um so there's some there's some aspects off that and obviously yes you can create reports as well if you want to go a bit okay, further cool. on people instinctively want to delete stuff and we all say don't <laughs> just yeah. deprecate it because keep it in the system keep the those iris and and downstream so we fully support deprecation on both the ontologies and on the um on the taxonomies and so there's quite a lot, a lot of stuff in there behind the scenes again you know for handling deprecations but it's a really important thing that sometimes it's it's just not that glamorous but it's a really yeah. important important uh, important part of the system so we make it very easy to manage deprecation um, and i think just on this side one other thing just to show is is versions so again part of the process you know you make some edits you deploy it to a downstream system what what we support as well as just snapshots you can create live versions of, of projects. So right. if you are querying it via an API, when you create a version, it's actually a live copy you can still access via the API. So you can have multiple live copies of your data. Um, so if for some reason somebody said, okay, what was that in that version? It's still there and you can still query it from Graphology. And obviously you can do the usual things you'd expect to do. You can see the history between versions yeah. if there were any downloaded and so on. So you know, when we started out, it was very much most of our users were using taxonomies with a little bit of ontology. But what we've found is that there's a real demand for um, ontology management on its own to some degree and large ontologies. And our release today was about supporting large ontologies and especially life science ontologies. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole set of ontologies called OBO, um, mm -hmm. which are you know very widely used. And, and so our customers are very keen you know to use those and 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 it's mainly things like mapping into those ontologies you know they're they're a reference data source and, yeah. and that's really how they want to use them um so if i just go into here so um so this is let's say um a single ontology project but when you add up the classes in these four ontologies this i think there's nearly nine hundred thousand classes mm -hmm. between these four okay. ontologies. so we've got a lot of, i mean this is just running on my 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 laptop the, the entire system is running on my laptop um, and if I go into into Mondo, um, say you know, um, essentially you know, um, it's as on the taxonomy side, it, it works in a very similar way. So behind here, obviously, it's the out standard, 
um, and we support you know, a good subset of our, um, and that's increasing over time. Yeah. So we, you know, we support things like class hierarchy, class equivalent, disjointness, um, and um, and in this release, um, we support SCOS annotations as well. So what we find is that you know pe these use cases, people um, they want to connect ontologies together, and really annotations are how you do that. So we support custom annotations and and SCOS out of the box, and and the SCOS one was. Um, something that's you know we had feedback from that people wanted to support SCOS annotations too. So, um, so we've got a, you know a really sophisticated way to to map and, and connect ontologies together yeah. now as well. Yeah, that's great. Um, and if I just switch into to Kebby because I think there's a there's a good example on, on Kebby. Um, so, if I go on, yeah, if I go on Atom, so I think um, yeah, so I think down here you can see you know these are the custom annotations mm -hmm. uh, on, on 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 this class, and so. Uh, and yeah, so we've got sophisticated abilities to manage those. You know, they can be relationships, they can be values, and, and so on and so on. Now, obviously, when you're navigating really big ontologies, and some of them go really deep, and it's the same on the taxonomy side as well. You know, we, we've seen them like 17 levels deep. So yeah. we have various things to help navigate people around, and, and that's important. It's like so we have a, this kind of tooltip oh, cool. to see where you are there. But one of the one of the things that we added recently, the tooltip is visual, by the way. I like that. Yeah. So I say one of what. This was a feature request from a customer because they were working in a in a, a what they would call a poly very poly hierarchical yeah. ontology, and yeah. it's like, well, we know we know where the class is, but we want to know all the places where the yeah. class is. And so we added this great feature. I think it's a great feature where essentially you can get a summary of where that class is throughout all of the ontologies in the project, and you can see the the exact tree, and you can click on anywhere on here, and it will take you to that location yeah, in the tree so cool. it's a way of you know finding and navigating to that particular part in the ontology which when you've got hundreds of thousands of classes it's easy to kind of lose your way uh, uh, you know yeah. in, in terms of i love this there's so many times i've been in this exact situation where i'm like okay i can see the the hierarchy in the area i'm in and sometimes there'll be like a notation somewhere that says oh yeah and it you know shows up in these um areas of the ontology somewhere else but it doesn't really give you a visual of well how deep is it in those other areas do they does it actually do a, a circular reasoning here where like something here relates back to a broader term like the, some of that weird stuff that can happen when you have a poly hierarchical kind of setup um so i love that you've made it visual and giving a, like a little summary here i think that's great but um on, on here we also have things like statistics as well um mm -hmm. And they're going off, and obviously, you know, on some of these, there are hundreds of thousands. I mean, you can see here, there's 25,000 yeah, classes. Nice. And again, quality check. So most of the stuff that's on the taxonomy side, there are similar capabilities on the ontology side. Yeah, so this is EasyCraft. The feedback which we have been getting from the users of Crophology is that they don't only want to sort of manage their taxonomies and ontologies in Crophology, but they want to publish that data too for the wider audience so that uh, use other people in the organization, they can interact with the data. If they want to find something, they can find that data at one central place. So we came up with the idea that in EasyGraph, there is Explorer, Graph Explorer. Mm -hmm. And with the Graph Explorer, you can set up a website kind of interface quickly. It's a sort of a a uh, low code or no code platform where you mm -hmm. have all you have to do is go to easy graph ui open the settings do a few settings for your website and using the graphology integration feature you press a button in graphology and then all the data is then sent over to easy graph and as, as an end result, you can set up very beautiful website like this. For example, here we have ontologies represented in a different way as cards. So you can mm -hmm. see ontologies showing up as card. And then you can set cool graph navigation and mm -hmm. visualization. So here we are representing holiday ontology. Visually, you can see in central mm -hmm. holiday mm -hmm. ontology, these are sort of uh, properties, these are classes in that ontology. And this is mm -hmm. interactive as well. So you can maximize it. And if I click on maximum runway length, you can nice. see more details about maximum runway length. It's a data type mm -hmm. property, it's functional. And you can also navigate further in, in this uh, 
pop up here so you can see what's a strange is to find way so not only this if you if you change this visual like adjust let's say i adjust this node and mm -hmm. I add a bit more expansion then you can create a version of this visualization and then you can save it as a new visualization so it's like a great way to sort of uh, stakeholders what you're doing <laughs> yeah 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 whatever way you want to uh, present your work create the visualization mm -hmm. as per the context maybe you are planning to do, give a demo or maybe yeah. it's just a, a simple yeah. use case of publishing on the site so question for you when you're saying you can create a website what do you mean by that i think i'm i'm struggling with what you mean by that so the site is really this simple user interface, essentially for non-technical users, so that to they be can... able to discover things in the graph and to use the graph, right? Yes. Essentially. Okay, so I I would say that it's more like a a portal to to like a custom portal to to your graph and the data behind it. So when you said connect the data to your website, what did you and and get the data and what do you mean by that? So in graphology, for example, in graphology, if I log in quickly, in graphology, when you log in in the dashboard, there is integration feature. Mm -hmm. In the integrations, you can say, this is one integration, and here is the endpoint where I want to push data from graphology to. And this endpoint here is essentially easy graph endpoint. So now in graphology, okay. I can go to... So MP. another approach to that, right, is like yeah. if you have I don't know, a SharePoint site or something and you needed to send it to that, that's how yes. you set those integrations up. Okay. And then you're saying one of them that connects into, you know, your ecosystem is the easy graph piece so that yes, you can exactly. create these. Okay. Okay. I'm on the same page now. This is great. I, um, I've had so many teams where I've had to ask them to build this thing because I, we all have this issue. Like, yeah, the salespeople need to see what's in our graph. And you might think they're not going to understand ontology, but it's like, yeah, but you know, sometimes they they have questions from customers, or they have questions themselves from you know analytics department or something that they need to be able to go in quickly figure it out, not have an ontology or a taxonomy background to understand what they're seeing and have an easy way to set it up. Okay, I'm I'm good now. <laughs> yeah, it's a, the focus of this portal is essentially to make the graph representation so easy so that anyone mm -hmm. can understand it and find the data or find whatever thing they are looking for. So we have a sort of like big search box here where yeah. a user can type, let's say, math. I type about math. I find what uh, what knowledge I have in my graph about math. So in I have a UNESCO thesaurus in there. There is a mathematics education as a concept. So mm -hmm. that's, that's the objective of this portal. Make it easy for the users to find the information okay in the graph and then yeah the visualization there are various components there so for example if i click on this uh ontology i have a tree like browse here so you can just view similar to graphology but more focused on browsing make it easy you can see information you can see the tree and also there are for example, this is the taxonomies card. You have various mm -hmm. taxonomies showing up here. And in the visualization for taxonomy, it's more hierarchical. This is another similar for, for your question, like what type of data? We have seen ontologies, we have seen taxonomies, but this mm -hmm. is another data set where we are talking about the presidents of US. So this mm -hmm. is neither taxonomy nor ontology, but a reference data, maybe a list yeah. of, yeah. So it's almost like a knowledge card or an info box. Exactly, on. Yeah. yeah. In in this case, we are setting what will be the image of uh, the person, and then Where, how does that work? Do you point it to Wikidata, or like is it something like that? You have to load it, and in the settings there, in the settings which I showed you before, mm -hmm. in the settings of the portal, you can say if the card is for type person then refer to this property and load image from that property address. Oh, I see. So so the property itself would have to have those additional assets for them to show up. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it will be just a URL from a yeah. data or some other place. Other cool feature is you can sort of uh, configure any 
uh, request where you can sort of uh, load any card you want from from the data. Mm-hmm. And then there is a whole set of data visualizations. Mm-hmm. Uh, this has been a feature which has been requested by many of our customers. Admin users who have special pr- privileges, they come mm-hmm. to this website, they can sort of create, again, these, these visualizations are sparkled. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will show you how it works. So they can they can just write the Sparkle query, see mm-hmm. the preview for the results, and then mm-hmm. configure the visualization for that right. data. Which you can configure on the website. And mm-hmm. for the API users, you can create essentially documentation and interactive API playground as well. So mm-hmm. for example, mm-hmm. this is this is the one example where we are going to fetch all the uh, concept schemes, all the taxonomies in the graph. So you can say type is equal to concept scheme. I've pre-configured it. And any users who come visit my portal, if a developer or someone, they can just come to my portal, run the request and see what the response is going to look like. What are the details for API request? And then they can start building their own application or start consuming data for the other systems that we have this cool component where you can sort of show the tabular form of the graph data so you here we are seeing yeah you can export it yeah 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 this is a very common request